Hi, this is Stephen Roselle, Solution Specialist with Autodesk, and I'm going to spend the next 10 some odd minutes going over the Turtle renderer. So Turtle is a renderer that was developed by a third party, a company called Illuminate Labs, which was acquired by Autodesk about a year ago in the summer of 2010. And the Turtle renderer has now been added as part of the Maya Entertainment Creation Suite. So in addition to Motion Builder and Mudbox, when you buy the Entertainment Creation Suite, you also get Turtle. So when we activate the Turtle renderer, you'll see that it loads a Turtle Properties tab or Turtle Render Settings tab. It uses the same standard rendering paradigm in that it shares the common attributes, things like file format, things like naming conventions, resolution, animation range, and so on. But it also has its own custom parameters that allow us to refine and kind of tweak the, the, the parameters or options for the Turtle renderer. So I'm just going to use the default settings here and I'll go into this scene which has a, uh, a couple of objects, a boat here and a dock and then it's got a single source light right now. So I'm just going to render this out and we'll see the results and you can see there that it quickly renders a fairly crude representation of that scene. So without going into too much detail I'm going to just refine this a bit first of all by increasing my anti-aliasing sample rate so I'll just bump up my min and max and just by changing those couple of parameters I re-render re this and I can clearly get a nicer result. So this can be used just like any other renderer, mental ray, render man, Maya's renderer, whatever, to generate a sequence of images if, if I choose to. But the real strength of Turtle is its ability to create light maps. So let's uh, go in and actually generate a light map from this. For starters, let me actually kind of rotate around my scene and kind of orbit around my scene rather and view it from the other side. And then let's go in and just re-render this so we can kind of see what's going on here. So right now I have a single source light, a directional light basically that is casting shadows of course. And it's kind of uh, simplistic lighting. I want to beef this up a little bit, make it a little bit more real. And I can do that simply by adding global illumination. So I'm going to bring over my render settings. And under global illumination, I'm first of all just going to turn that on. Now I'm not a rendering expert and I'm not going to dive into a lot of details here. There's a, a lot that we can talk about, but for now we're going to keep it simple. and We're going to do a primary global illumination pass using Final Gather. Now we have a variety of other options, which I'm not going to go into at the moment. Final Gather probably being the most common. So if I turn on Final Gather, then that will basically add a second uh, render pass to my scene. So it does a Final Gather pass and then it will go in and do the direct illumination pass and comp those together. The final gather pass, however, is kind of crude because all I have is that direct light in my scene right now. So I need some sort of an ambient light to generate a more realistic fi looking final gather. So I'll go back to my render settings here. And under environment, I have a variety of options. Um, I first of all uh, want to change my global illumination environment. And I can do that in a number of ways. One is I can use image based lighting. So if I have a high dynamic range image, uh, like a dome uh, for a dome or something, I can actually import that and use that for my lighting scheme. Or I can use something simple like a skylight, which basically has a few uh, scale and intensity values as well as a color value. So I could change that if I wanted to change the time of day from morning to night or something based on uh, color. Um, again, I could also load in an image based light, which I'm not going to do at the moment, but you can certainly do that. So just by changing those few parameters with Final Gather, and re-rendering this, you can clearly see that I'm getting a much more natural looking result. So again, it does the first pass with Final Gather, and then it goes in and it does the direct illumination pass and then comps those together to give me a much more natural looking lighting effect. But again, the core strength of Turtle is its ability to take all this and bake it down into texture space. As opposed to rendering a sequence of frames, I want to render out a single texture that I can apply to an object that would persist um, within a scene either for render purposes or for uh, export into a game engine, for example. So this is very commonly used, very widely used in the games industry. So let's uh, make a couple of tweaks here. First of all, I want to choose what I want to bake my texture to. So I'm actually going to choose this object here as a starting point. It's a very simple plane, but just to give you the basic ideas, and then we'll build up on that. So the first thing I need to do under my render settings is change my render type from rendering to baking which allows me to bake to either textures and or vertices. And then if I go under baking, here's where I can set my, my uh, option. So I'll choose texture, which is the default. 
And the one thing I want to select here is I want to choose what my targets are. So I don't necessarily want to bake everything in my scene. I either want to bake selected objects or a specific list of objects. So for now, I'm going to choose selected objects. And then I'm going to bake the plane here. So let's pull up my frame again for rendering here, or my render view. And I'll do the render. And what you'll see is it does the same two passes. It does my final gather pass for that object. And then it does my direct illumination pass. And then comps those together into a single texture. So there you'll see the final result. However, we're not actually seeing that in the viewport. So the viewport is not updating with the texture. So by default, it's just generating a texture, but it's not getting hooked up to my object. So one thing that's actually kind of unique to Turtle is the ability to actually pre-visualize, or rather just visualize, our light maps w in a non-destructive way. So we don't necessarily want to destroy our existing shader connections, but instead, we want to basically go in and under texture settings, we want to turn on model view hardware visualization. And that gives us a secondary texture, which is a hardware texture that allows us to visualize this effect. So again, I'll turn that on and I'll re-render this and we'll see the results. Let's pull this off to the side. And again, I'll quickly re-render. So now as that's finishing up, I'll actually just pull my render view out of frame. And when that's done rendering, we'll actually see the effect directly in the viewport. So there we go. So now you can see the effect in the viewport. But as I mentioned before, this is a non-destructive bake. So what this is doing is it's creating something called a hardware visualization node. So if I actually take a look at the shader that's associated with this object, you can see here that it's got a it's standard shader and then it's got a hardware visualization shader, which basically takes all the light map information and overrides the viewport with a hardware shader. So it's non-destructive in the sense that I can actually just get rid of this hardware shader and it will remove the effect in the viewport. And now it hasn't actually changed the shader, which didn't have anything on it now to begin with. But I'll show this in a more complex example and that will be a little bit more clear, I think. So let's uh, actually do something, again, more complex. Let's bake the entire scene or let's bake more objects in my scene. So I'm gonna start by baking the uh, the dock here with the boat on it. Now what you can see here is that I've got a series of objects and each of these objects is ind independent and individual. So I could bake them one at a time. But I want to actually bake them all together. Now one thing to point out here is if I look at the UV space and I go into my UV set editor, each one of these has a base texture map. So the boat, you can clearly see how the decal for the boat is set up. If I grab the barrel, you can clearly see here, if I go to map one, how the barrel texture is unique to each barrel. Uh, or maybe it's the same texture, but it's uh, it's applied uh, to the barrel as a whole. And then the dock is, is similar. If I go to map one, then I've got a wood plank texture that is basically tiled over a series of, of uh, planks uh, that are geometry. But ultimately what I want to do is bake all this to a single light map that essentially spans across all these objects. So you can see here that my barrel, if I go into, actually let's just select all these, I've got actually a selection set, or rather a layer here that allows me to select all these together. So you can see that if I look at map one for all of these, then I have a bunch of kind of overlapping garbage essentially. But if I look at map, or rather light map, then I've got a single tile essentially. So I've got all of my UVs laid out between zero and one for all the objects. So if I select the boat versus the barrels versus the dock, you can see that they each take up their own texture space. So I want to do two things. One is I want to determine which objects I want to bake. So I'm just going to select all these objects from my set. And then I'm going to go into my render settings under baking. And if I scroll down under my baking settings, I've got a UV set parameter. So I want to first of all go in and say that I want to bake to the light map for all these objects. And then I also want to, under targets, instead of using selected objects, I actually want to add these objects so that I no longer have to have them selected. So now whatever's in this list will get baked, and everything in this list will get baked based on that UV set. And the other thing I want to do is I want to turn on one more parameter called merge to one map. If this were not on, it would bake a single light map texture for each one of these individual objects, which is not what I want. Because I'm creating a single texture, I want to bake all this to a single map. So I can do all this in one fell swoop, basically. Again, the other thing I want to do is pre-visualize this. But I might actually want to visualize only the lighting information. 
So let's go under our outputs. And you can see that under outputs, right now I'm going to be baking out the full shading. That's actually going to comp in the diffuse color map, essentially, into the light map. So I'm going to turn that off, and instead I'm going to turn on illumination and indirect illumination. And then we'll see the results of that. And again, I have my hardware visualization on, so I can see this directly in the viewport. So for starters, I'll pull up my render view, and we'll begin to render this out and see what happens. So it's going to take all those objects. It's going to do a very fast uh, final gather pass. And then it's going to do another pass of direct lighting. And then ultimately, after it does that, it's going to comp it all together into a single texture. And ultimately, if I move this down, now I can see using my hardware visualization node, I can see the effect of that light map on all of my objects. So again, this is a texture that I'm visualizing in my hardware view. Again, it's non-destructive, so I'm able to see in my viewport the effect of that light map. But if, if I don't like it for some reason, it's just simply a visualization. So all I have to do is just go in and find my hardware visualization node. So let's, for instance, grab the dock here, and we'll just graph that. Now you can see here that the original textures, my diffuse map and my normal map, are not messed up at all. It's non-destructive. And then here's my hardware visualization node with my light map attached to it. So all I have to do is just delete that node, and it removes the effect.